About 18 months ago, I made a video showing off some of the features of the 74LS 181 or the 74HCT 181. And in that video, you know, I kind of went through the data sheet and I showed what we could do with, uh, with the chip, you know, using functions like we have here, some of these logic functions. And if you look at this data sheet, you'll notice there's quite a few duplicates um, and for a moment, we can just ignore this side. Let's just focus on this side. But if you look here, for example, we have A plus B, which is the OR function. And we also have that down here, A plus B, you know, the OR function. So there's quite a few duplicates in this sheet. And in the arithmetic functions in particular, there are several functions that I just can't for the life of me fathom what purpose they could ever serve, such as uh, A plus B plus or I should say A or B plus A and not B. It's things, things like this, I just can't see how they'd ever have a use. So one of the things I've done is I've gone through and I've just made up my own sheet using functions that actually seem like they would serve a purpose. And I've given them their, uh, you know, instead of using the, like the Boolean algebra of the A with the line over indicating not A, I've reworded a lot of these so that they'd make more sense in terms of, you know, maybe putting this inside of a breadboard computer at some point or using these chips for the basis of the ALU of a breadboard computer. So we have our functions like not A, nor, NAND, not B, and so on. So I think these would be the useful logical functions. And then over here, these would be the useful arithmetic functions. Anywhere there's a blank, it's either because the function's been duplicated somewhere else, like here we have the OR function, and up here somewhere there was the OR function, so I just left it out. And then any time there was a function that I just thought was useless, I took it out. So this is what I was left with after going through and eliminating. And again, in the previous video, you know, I showed what a lot of these functions, you know, how they worked on the ALU, like how the, how the NOT function works and how the AND function works. So... Uh, if you want, you can go back and view that video to see that stuff. What I want to talk about today is this uh, sub function or subtract. And the subtract function, it's not just simply um, A minus B, like, like you might think. But the subtract function um, actually unlocks new modes of operation, basically, that the, uh, the chip, that allows the chip to do things that we couldn't do otherwise. And some of those are that I've labeled here, like we have comparator functions basically is what it boils down to. Now, if you just want a comparator, there are much easier chips to use for just comparing values and I wouldn't use an ALU for that purpose. But since I'm using the ALU for other functions, the fact that it has these comparators built in is quite nice. And the comparator functions we have are like A equals B, but we can also test if the value of A is greater than the value of B or if the value of A is less than the value of B. And that's what these over here indicate. So in this particular mode, which is low, high, high, low, and on the uh, data sheet you can see that here on this line, low, high, high, low, we go into the subtract mode. And the data sheet does refer to this. It says that, you know, when the data sheet refers to subtract mode, uh, this is the A minus B minus one function. And the reason I point that out here to myself is because if you look at the original data sheet and you, and you look at this, at least to me, it isn't obvious, and maybe I'm just dumb, but it isn't obvious to me what they're talking about when they're talking about the subtract mode. You know, in the data sheet, they refer to the subtract mode, but there's nothing in here that's just simply, you know, A minus B. Uh, the closest we have is this A minus B minus one. And when I saw that, you know, to me, that wasn't, that certainly didn't jump out at out at me as being, oh, that's the subtract mode, that's what they're talking about. But it turns out that is what they're talking about. So that's kind of the first obstacle I had to overcome to unlocking some of these things, is just to figure out what they were talking about. So when we're in the uh, subtract mode, th the mode select should be low, high, high, low, and the mode control input should be low. And that's, uh, that's the way we have it set here. So Immediately by looking at the, the two values, we can see there's nothing on the A register and there's nothing on the B register, and therefore the A equals B LED is on, which is it's indicating equality. These are, these are equal to each other. And if I put any value in the B register, 
such as just a 1. We now have the A equals B LED has gone off because 0 is not equal to 1, so we would expect that LED to go off, and it does. And we now have this LED over here going on, indicating that A is now less than B, which is true. 0 is indeed less than 1. So if we turn that off, and now they're 0 and 0 again, so we have um, A is equal to B. And if I put a value into the A side, now the other LED comes on, indicating that A is greater than B. This is very cool, and it works. It took me a very long time to get this all sorted out. So one of the things that I do want to point out about this, uh, this chip, the A equals B uh, output on the, on the ALU comes from pin number 14. And there's by looking at just the pin diagram, you wouldn't think anything special about it. But the, the data sheet does indicate that the A equals B output pin is open collective or open collector. And I actually had to look up and figure out what that meant. And basically, it just means that it acts like a switch. And um, it, it's, it's either open as if it's not connected to anything at all. So it's not, high, it's not that it's in a high state. It's just that it's not connected at all. So the problem I was first running into was when I tried to hook up an LED just to that pin, it just wasn't working. Um, it wasn't giving me any kind of reliable output. So, so I ended up having to run the A equals B pin from here, you know, straight out of here. I'm actually running it over to this part of the breadboard through a pull-up resistor. And I'm using a 680K ohm pull-up resistor over there. And then from there, what I'm actually doing is I'm going into an AND gate. Because you have to remember, each of these ALUs is 4-bit. So if I were just testing the A equals B equality from one of these ALUs, I would actually be only testing 4 bits, not 8. And in this, the way I have it wired, this is the lower 4 bits, and this is the upper 8 bits. So I'm actually running the A equals B pin um, out of both of these over to these uh, pull-up resistors. And then in parallel with that, they're running over to this AND gate, and then the resultant is that A equals B pin right there, or that A equals B LED, rather. So again, you know, if I... Uh, put some values on this side, say, and I'm having all kinds of problems with this breadboard, by the way. Uh, these are cheap breadboards, and I really regret building this on these really low-quality breadboards. I've ordered some new boards. I'm going to replace all this on new boards. So I'm having all kinds of problems with, uh, you know, power. So if this thing may not go according to plan. But but again, if I put a value, uh, you know, like here, I've got the value of 3 now on this side. So the A equals B... LED has gone off, and the A uh, less than B LED has gone on. Now I should say, if you look at the pin layout, there you'll notice there's no such thing as an A greater than B or an A less than B. If you look at those pin layouts, you, you, you'll see that doesn't exist. The way, the way I was able to make these, and the data sheet does talk about this, it says if you want to use uh, that equality, and actually it looks like it's right here, so I'll try to point it out. You know, it says uh, the A equals B output from the device goes high when all four F outputs are high and can be used to indicate logic equivalence over four bits when the unit is in the subtract mode. The A equals B output is open collector and can be wired and with other A equals B outputs to give a comparison for more than four bits, and that's what I was talking about earlier how we have to and them together to get all eight bits compared. But this next part, it says, the A equals B signal can be used with the CN plus four signal to indicate A greater than B and A less than B. So what I'm actually doing in order to get this uh, A greater than B and A less than B is I'm actually running, uh, this is actually a NOR gate, and I'm running the output of this AND into the NOR gate, and I'm running the output of the carryout LED into the NOR gate as well. And then based on the value that the NOR gate gets, determines whether or not A is greater than B or A is less than B. And if we look, let me move the camera up just a bit. If we ignore these LEDs, just ignore these completely for a moment, and just concentrate on these two LEDs here, the A equals B and the carryout, you can actually tell 
what value you're going to get just based on these two LEDs. And that's what the data sheet talks about. You can use the A equals B and you can use the carryout to determine if the value is greater than or less than. It's just for me, I like having discrete LEDs for each thing that I'm doing because it's just easier to comprehend. But currently you can see both of these LEDs are off. And when both of those LEDs are off, that indicates the A is uh, less than B. And if I turn, let's say these off, you can see that the A equals B um, LED is off, indicating we do not have a quality. However, the carryout LED is on. And because the carryout LED is on and this LED is off, that indicates that A is greater than B. And of course, if both these are off, rather if all the bits are off, then we have A equals B equality and we do not have the carryout. So getting all this wired up was, uh, was quite interesting and presented some, uh, some challenges to say the least. But once I had it all set up and working, I thought it was really cool. And um, I thought I'd make a little video about it so you guys could see one of the other functions of this chip because I think this chip's really neat. It's really interesting to mess around with. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video.